Hello folks, Chad Stanton here, a professional woodworker of nearly 25 years, sharing my experiences with you. The title of this video is Making Money with Windows, and I'm sure many of you have clicked on it because you're interested in the money part. So let me address that right up front. This is not a video on how to install windows. Now, I do have some friends that do that for their job, and they actually make a pretty good living doing it. This is also a video not about manufacturing windows. That requires machines, uh, employees, uh, computers, too much competition. Nope, this is entirely different. This is about working with windows out of a historical home. See, in my town, we have a neighborhood called the Old West End, and this neighborhood is governed by a historical district. What does that mean? Well, if you own one of those homes and something goes wrong with it, such as say like the window, some trim, the railings, you can't just run down to the big box store or a hardware store and grab whatever they have in stock. No, it has to be done and meet the requirements of how it was once built back in the day. And that could easily be well over a hundred years ago. Now this particular client owned the home and he was calling around all the window shops in town and all the different woodworking shops and no one could help him with it. However, two of the shops actually gave him my name and number. And so we wind up here. So to answer the question, how can you make a lot of money doing this? Well, the fact that there's limited resources and if you possess high skills, then you can command a little bit more extra money. Oh, and to add to the fact, this customer was under a serious timeline. So I had to drop the job I was currently working on to get on this, which also required a little bit more cash. Okay, so with the money part of it out of the way, let's talk about the part that I'm really excited about, which are the tools, the techniques, and most importantly, the geometry that's involved in doing this window. So you can see from this photo here that when the window came into me, that the bottom rail is completely gone, and the muntins, which is the grid work that holds the glass, well, you can see several of those pieces are missing. So the first thing I want to address is making the muntin. Now, this has a unique profile, so let's take a closer look at it. A close-up of this shows you that we have on the outside this decorative, like, thumbnail profile. And then we have this fillet or this rabbit. This is what the glass will rest against, and then it will get glazed in place uh, so the glass won't fall out or move. So making this profile is the most important and first thing I have to address. So they do make router bit sets that will make this profile on it. Uh, however, I went to three stores in town and nobody had it in stock. Reason being is this isn't a real popular profile that needs to be cut very often. Fortunately for me, I have like a hundred year old hand plane that does exactly this profile. This hand plane, actually has two irons in it. The one iron cuts the thumbnail profile and the other iron cuts the rabbit or the fillet on there. Like so. However, this hand plane can only do one side at a time. So this will have to get flipped around to be done for the other side. So it doesn't really matter if you have the router bit set or if you have an old hand plane making the molding is not going to be the hard part of doing this job. No, the hard part is actually getting the pieces to fit together in the window. So let's take a closer look at the window itself. Now on our window, we actually have three different cuts and three different angles we have to concern ourselves with. So let's start with the easiest one. That would be here in the middle. This piece, and this piece are one long piece and these smaller ones connect to it. So let's zoom in tight here. Well, as we can see, this is just a 90 degree cut to our other piece. However, if I take my molding and just cut it at 90 degrees, well, when I put it in there, <laughs> I have a terrible gap and it actually offers no form of strength to it. So what I need to do is I have to cope this so now the piece can fit around it. Nice tight look and it also gives some structural strength to it. So 
How do we figure out what this profile is? Well, there's a couple of ways, but let me show you what I thought was the easiest. So the first thing I did was I took a scrap piece of our molding and I just simply traced it on to the graph paper. Then with a, another piece of paper, I traced it on there and made the negative cut of half of the profile of the molding. Now what I can do is I can take my molding and lay my template on there and simply trace this out. That is essentially what I need to cut out. Now I could use a, a coping saw for that, but what I actually found was the easiest was I simply just went to my band saw and by slowly working this back and forth, notching it out, uh, I could just nibble it away to where I get my profile. Once again, that method worked great for where our pieces have to come in at 90 degrees. But we have two other shapes we're dealing with. Keep in mind we're dealing with a square and also when it comes here to the edge we are also dealing with a triangle. So let's start with the square first. Now we know on a square that we have 90 degrees at all four corners. You add those up you get 360 degrees. So we know that each of these are 90 degrees, but this is coming in at a miter. Let's get a closer look at that. So you notice that our piece here isn't coming in straight at 90 degrees like the other one. No, this is mitered. So what's that miter at? Well, most of us know that half a 90 is 45. To make the 45 on my molding piece here, uh, I think using a miter saw is too dangerous, especially when you're using small pieces of trim. So what I found is an easier way is first I'll find the center of the trim piece and then on my uh, disc sander here with the miter gauge set at 45, I just simply place the piece in there and sand on it until I hit my pencil mark, I flip it over do the other side and I have a real nice looking 45 degree angle on the molding. With my 45 piece now sanded uh, I need to go back to the bandsaw and, and trim it out again but sometimes sometimes this, this edge gets hard to see so what I like to do is just with the pencil I just shade the edge of it uh, that, that gives it a little bit more for me to have a reference. And then just like before, uh, I'll nibble it out on the bandsaw till I get that profile out of there. And then you can see this will allow us to do our 90 degree miter there. All right, so that seems to be it. Well, not exactly. That only dealt with the square. Let's take a look at it one more time. Here we are back at the window. We are working on making this 45 degree angle. And you can see when I put my two sample pieces in here, we've done that. We've took care of our 45 degrees. But there's another problem. This piece should go up tight against uh, the style of the window. And I'm not talking about this gap here, I'm talking about this gap here. Why is that? It's like there's more that has to be relieved on, on this. But if I do that, then I'm gonna have a big gap on this side of the trim. What is going on? Well, let me explain it. With our square adding up to 360 degrees, Half of this, giving us a triangle, adds up to 180 degrees. So what are the angles on my triangle? 
Well, this one we know is at 90. It's a right angled triangle. So if this is 90, our remaining angles are 90 degrees. Cut 90 degrees in half and we have 45 and 45. However, we're doing a miter. Remember, a miter is, is uh, 45 is our total angle. So half of 45 is 22 and a half. So easy, right? Just over to the miter saw, set it at 22 and a half, and we're good to go. Uh, not quite, let me show you why. So on my miter saw, I have to think about this a little different than I do with my protractor. See, from on the protractor, from the, here, it's zero, and you come up around to it, it's 90 degrees. However, on the miter saw, uh, this is not zero, this is zero. And then this by there turns all the way to 90 degrees. So we're not turning the miter saw to 22 and a half. No, we have to take 22 and a half minus 90 degrees. And what's that give us? That gives us an angle at 67 and a half. That is too much for my miter saw. This only goes up to 60 degrees. By the way, just as a second uh, time as a reminder, I don't recommend cutting small trim on a miter saw. It's just too dangerous. So this was my sample piece that I made the angle at 67 and a half degrees. And you can see that this fits into the window and goes up nice and snug. So how did I find that 67 degrees? Well, be quite honest with you, it, because it's such an awkward shape and it's small, uh, I wound up just kind of uh, nibbling away at it with some gouges and a chisel until I got uh, that angle just right. So from there then, I kept this, and what that allowed me to do was I could transfer my marks up onto here, and then I could cut that all out. So ultimately, in the end, what do we have on this trim piece here? Well, on this side, we have it mitered at 45, and on this side, going into the, the window frame, it's at 67 and a half. A pretty tricky cut to do, but as you can see, it looks great in the end. Now I realize that building a window like that or even doing a window repair such as that is probably something that very few of you are going to run into. But the main point that I wanted to make was so many people either write me or come to me and say that they want to be a full-time woodworker like myself. And I tell them that anytime a client comes through that shop door, you have to be able to be ready to do it all. If you can't, they're going to leave and they're going to go until they can find someone that does do it. And then guess what? The next time that client has another job, well, they're not going to come back to you. They're going to go to that guy who knew how to solve the problems. And if you are enjoying the show and the information I am sharing, well, I would kindly ask you to hit that thanks tab and donate towards the show. Now, if you're not in a position where you're able to donate some, then I would simply ask that you like and share the video with others because that helps grow my channel here on YouTube. Also too, don't forget that down below you can sign up for a free monthly newsletter. I also have a list down in there that shows uh, the tools that I use, uh, books that I would uh, suggest, and we have a Facebook group page called What Are You Doing? as a place where you can show off what you're making in your shop. And if you have a question about something you're building and need a little bit of help, well, feel free to email me at woodshopintime@gmail.com because my whole goal is to make you a better woodworker. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, keep on dancing.